and I'm glad to have you back at the WCOM Basics Differential Equation Series. Um, this video is going to take a look at an application of linear first, or first order differential equations being mixing problems. So in these problems, you're going to have a tank with some initial volume and initial concentration of a solvent. Uh, and it might be the initial concentration in the, in the tank might be zero. So you would start with pure uh, water um, or pure whatever. Uh, and then we have some inflow. And the inflow is going to have a rate and a concentration associated with it. So here I have um, all the, cons all the uh, variables that you'll need to in this problem. Uh, so the inflow is going to have a rate and a concentration associated with it, as well as the outflow. Uh, however, the concentration coming out is not going to be, uh, is not going to be the same, or is not going to be a constant as it would be if we're just pumping, say, something with eight kilograms per liter of salt in at one liter per second into a tank and it's flowing out at some given rate because that's something you can easily monitor and we do not know the concentration at which it's coming out. So we're going to model um, we're going to model this problem using uh, differential equations and hopefully it will turn out to be something like a f linear first order differential equation and hint it will be uh, something like a first order differential equation. but. So yeah, we're going to take, um, we're going to be looking at the rate at which the mass of, of um, contaminant or mass of solvent is changing uh, over time. So we have the rate of change of the mass is equal to the uh, RNCN and rate times concentration. If you just look at the units and do some dimensional analysis, we have is in kilograms per second. So we have the rate of change coming in, uh, the rate due to it coming in minus the rate due to it coming out. Uh, so, um, and since we're given this and we're given R out, we're just going to replace those with constants. So what I've done here is put everything in terms of our main variables. We have mass and volume and, of course, time. So uh, dm dt is equal to k1 minus k2 times mass over volume. And one thing to note with the volume of the tank is that it might not always be constant. So if, what, if stuff is coming in at the same rate it's going out, then that's fine. Volume is just whatever you're given initially. If stuff is coming in faster than it's coming out, you have a positive uh, dv dt. If it's coming in slower than it's coming out, then you have a negative uh, dv dt, meaning that it's either going to be, uh, the volume is going to be increasing or the volume is going to be decreasing. And one thing that you might want, wish to find out is when, when does the uh, volume of solution uh, exceed the volume of the tank and start to overflow? And that you will just solve with this equation. Um, but yeah. For the purposes of, of solving for m as a function of time, uh, we just need to find uh, v. And if it's a real tricky problem, then you just integrate this, and it's not so bad at all. Uh, one thing to note is, is this is just going to be a constant, by the way, integrated with respect to time. And you add a c which you will find with initial conditions. Um, we're going to do a problem later on, so there's nothing to worry about. It's really not too abstract.
So uh, coming from here, we have um, m, uh, our, our derivative of m with respect to time, and then plus our p of x, or I guess p of t as a function of uh, times m, and then is equal to k1. And one thing nice is that k1 is always going to be constant. Uh, we're not going to have a function like sine or whatever um, when we, uh, as we did in our, in the previous video. So we have our integrating factor is e to the integral of k2 over v dt. Uh, v may, might be constant, in which case your job is very easy. Uh, v also uh, could be uh, some function of time, in which case it's not so easy. But we'll get to that as we'll get to that bridge as we cross it. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Sorry, and then we have d dx of i times m equals k one times i. Integrate both sides by uh, with respect to x. And I kind of had to squeeze it in, but. We would just integrate both sides with respect to uh, t, which I called x previously, but well, it's all the same thing. Uh, and divide by i, and we have our function mass as a function of time. Uh, so that's all you need to solve mixing problems. I'm going to run through a quick example just to uh, show you how to, how to do it in practice. So we have some solution of salt water, uh, sodium chloride, plus uh, dihydrogen monoxide coming in at 10 liters per second and with a concentration of one tenth uh, kilogram per liter. Um, the solution is flowing out of the tank at 8 liters per second, which we should note means the volume in the tank is not going to stay constant. Initially, the volume of the tank is um, the volume of the tank is equal to 100 liters, and it has some mass of salt water. Uh, it has some mass of salt, sorry, of five kilograms. So we're going to model this equation, set it up, and solve it. So we have dm dt, um, and I've just went ahead and plugged in rn times cn, uh, which is going to end up to be 1. But I just want you to see how the, uh, how the units interact which, with each other. So you're just going to get kilograms per second there. Minus uh, r out, which is 8, times mass over volume, which is the uh, concentration coming out. Uh, and we also notice that uh, volume, uh, volume is uh, not constant, so the rate of change of volume is 2 uh, units, which is liters per second. Uh, so we integrate, uh, and right here is when I have used um, our initial condition saying that initially the volume of, tank, of the tank at time 0 is equal to 100 liters. I've used that to solve for c. So we have our volume as a function of time is equal to 2t plus 100. Uh, so we can now just flat out solve this. Uh, 
Um, and I've dropped the units here just because I don't, uh, uh, they're getting a little in the way, but keep those in the back of your head if, you, if it makes it easier for you. Um, so we have our P, we have our Q, we're going to find our uh, integrating factor. Um, so, uh, the integral of P with respect to T, what I've done to evaluate that is divided everything by 2 so that we just have T by itself. And once we do that, we notice it's just, uh, we can take out the 4 since that's a constant, and uh, the integral of 1 over T plus 50, since T plus 50 is linear, we can say that's natural log of t plus 50. Um, if you recall from calculus uh, 1, I believe, that if you just did u substitution there, it would. Uh, you just pull it out, put it back in. So I'm not even going to bother with that. So we have the integrating factor is t plus 50 uh, to the fourth power. Moving on, we have, we know that the uh, Derivative with respect to x of i times mass is equal to i times q, and our q is 1. So we have our i here, d dt of, of this, uh, t plus 50 to the 4 times m. Uh, integrating both sides with respect to t will give us this. Um, uh, integrating both sides with respect to x. Again, we have a linear term, so we shouldn't bother with the substitution. Um, uh, we have, uh, notice we have one extra power here, and we just have uh, this four times here. Uh, so it just turns out to one on the right-hand side once we divide throughout by four. But what we are, what we are doing is we also, this also acts on the plus c, so we have c times t plus 50 to the minus 4. Um, so this is our mass as a function of time, and I believe, so um, yeah, we have our mass as a function of time. Now it would be nice if we could solve for t. Um, and if we look at our initial mass, which is 5 kilograms, so we know m at time 0 is 5. So we plug in 0, 1 fifth um, times 50 is 10 plus, uh, so yeah, uh, let's, let's just do that real quick. Yeah, uh, I don't have a calculator with me, but if you're watching this at home, you might evaluate this numerically. However, uh, this is our RC. Uh, so that's about it. That's about the hardest problem you can find. Uh, maybe if, if we were given the maximum uh, maximum volume the tank could hold, we might, uh, so our volume as a function of time was 2t plus 100, we might see when that equaled the maximum, uh, the maximum capacity of the tank, but that will still not be so, uh, so difficult, you just plug and chug. Uh, 
thank you for watching. That's how you solve, um, what did we just solve? That's how you solve mixing problems. Uh, go on to the next video where we'll move on to uh, second order differential equations. Uh, also, links here can be found to go to our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out the rest of the videos in this playlist. Of course, on the website, you can find a differential equations textbook with a lot more, uh, with a lot more examples for you to do. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a good day.